for you. It is almost exactly 10 past nine. They're called the baby boomers. Now the first of the post-war generation are about to turn 65 and we've been running a special series on them all week. Some say they're a generation who've become rich thanks to the housing market. But in today's final film, Tim Muffet meets one man who is struggling to get off the property ladder. Baby boomers were lucky, so the argument goes. They were able to buy property cheap and watch house prices grow. Now everything is easy cut of you. The case against the baby boomers goes something like this. They have enjoyed a phenomenal 40-year housing boom. Meanwhile, properties for younger people have become unaffordable. And if that wasn't bad enough, baby boomers are now selling their houses for vast profits and looking forward to comfortable retirements. Oh yes, with a guaranteed final salary pension. And then okay. there's the reality, which isn't always so simple. Keith Faint lives in Hartlepool. He got on the property ladder in the 70s. Trouble is, he can't get off. We bought this Nesbit Road in, in about 75. I honestly can't remember what, what price it was. It's been on the market now for a, a good year. Have you been surprised as to how hard it's been to sell? Yes, yeah, because it is a good family house. Keith has multiple sclerosis. He can't work. But just as he needs to sell up, cash in and buy a smaller place, the property market is letting this baby boomer down. Your savings do go down at a very fast rate. When you've got no real income to, to top it up, Property has made some baby boomers wealthy. In 50 years, the average UK price has gone from £2,500 to £162,000, even after inflation that's a rise of 273% in real terms. But timing is everything, and as they hit retirement, some baby boomers are finding the property market harder to negotiate than they thought. People say the baby boom generation was the lucky generation, partly because you, you made money from property. Do you, do you agree with that? Only way you can do with that is if, you, if you're in permanent employment. If you had uh, money to back you all the way, well, yes, it would, because you can buy others, but um, you're limited to what your, what your circumstances are. Keith says his pension will be small. He needs to sell his house. Although many born in the baby boom have been winners in the property boom, for some like Keith, the housing market isn't providing all the answers. Tim Muffet, BBC News. Well, let's talk a little bit more about this with property expert Henry Pryor. Um, Henry, very good morning and Happy New Year morning to years, you. Um, year. For the baby boomers, housing has been seen as, I don't know what the right phrase is, but a sort of cash cow in some circumstances, but not everybody has benefited. Well, very much like the last 12 months, we've probably seen winners and losers, and as we will over the coming year, so it's been with our parents' generation, the baby boomers, boomers those born after the Second World War, many of whom, as various governments of different flavours have encouraged them to become homeowners, have seen a great change in the way that they've invested for the future. They've moved away from the stock market. They've started to look at bricks and mortar as being that, that uh, opportunity to, to, to make money. And it has been a phenomenal generator for that generation of cash that has then been reinvested into the wider economy and given us very much the, 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 the bubble that uh, the Thatcher government and that generation then move forward on. So it's been a great benefit. Do you think any generation from now on will experience that in the same way? Well, something... Is it the rate of the increase, which is so extraordinary? Well, as we saw from Tim's package, seeing that kind of inflation, 200, 300% increases, we have to remember that back in 1955, 1957, £2,000, which was the cost of an average house, if you allow for inflation today, is still about £40,000. That increase has been a huge driver of wealth and wealth creation because, of course, people have been able to take that money out and reinvest it in other things. They've been able to spend it in the high street, and it's one of the reasons that we have concerns about the housing market going forward. But to answer your question, 
I suspect it'll be difficult unless we see rampant inflation, which the government are very, very keen to keep a lid on. It's going to be difficult to see why we'd see such a staggering increase in house prices over the next 20, 30 or even 65 years. Can you cast ahead sort of 12 months and imagine if we're sitting here at the beginning of 2012, how the picture might change over the next few months? Well, there is, as there always is, uh, as many different opinions as there are people you stop and ask, of course. Mm. Nobody really knows what's going to happen. But my gut feeling on this is that whilst there are some parishes that will do better than other parishes, and clearly central London, we saw from land registry statistics published just the day before yesterday, Camden, for example, saw a 13.6% increase mm -hmm. over the year in house prices. People in Wales saw a 3.3% fall. And that will be the picture as we go forward over the next year. But I think that we've got some significant pressures as we go forward into 2011. We've got the rises in VAT for the house moving process coming through next Tuesday. We've got a, an increase in stamp duty for people at the very top end of the, of the housing ladder on the 6th of April when they will be paying 1% more uh, in stamp duty. And of course, we've got the cuts, the, the repercussions of the government's spending review and the cuts that are going to come forward. Remember that. As we look towards the next three to five years, if we just take the student and tuition fee story that was so raw for, most, for so many people at the back end of last year, its students will, will actually be looking at spending money paying down their student loans rather than saving a deposit. At the moment, people have to find about 35 to 36,000 pounds out of taxed income just to get a deposit to get on the housing ladder. And that's going to be, that will remain a significant challenge through 2011. Why did property work out so well for the baby boomers? I think that governments of all flavours over the last 60, 65 years have tried to encourage... Remember, after the Second World War, when this country was in a fair degree of, of, of a shambles, putting the, putting the infrastructure back, we saw the, the rise of the garden cities, like Welling Garden City, Letchworth Garden City, and Metroland. Mm. Um, coming along and, and an encouragement by the, by the powers that be of all flavours to get people to own their own homes, for Englishmen's homes to be their castle. And we saw this, this great increase in the number of in owner occupation. So although most people still, 11.3 million people still, uh, share ownership with their building society or bank, the far more people now own their own home technically than, than did after the Second World, World War. And that has been something that has been a great positive benefit both to that generation and for our generation, despite the fact that, of course, now the people that are suffering uh, uh, when it comes to making something of the housing boom are those that are coming out of the top, the saga generation who are finding it, as we saw from that package, mm. difficult to sell, to cash in their chips, get the money in order to be able to move on with their lives. Henry Pryor, good to talk to you this morning. Thank you very much indeed. Right. And a happy new year to you. you. OK, 18 minutes past nine. You're watching Breakfast, of course, from BBC News. Let's update you on our headlines this morning.